Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the third video on the November 21 paper 4-2 and we will do question 7 and 8 in this video. Now we start with question number 7. Uh, now this is a very interesting genetics question and I really like genetics questions because either you get them all right or you get them all wrong. So you can get full marks in this question. The Labrador is a variety of domestic dog. I love Labradors. Labradors have fur that can be brown, black, or yellow. So we've got three different phenotypes, brown, black, or yellow. In Labradors TRIP1, T-Y-R-P-1, I'm just saying TRIP1, but it's you can say whatever you like. TRIP1 is one gene that codes for fur color. The gene has two alleles, B, big B, and small b. The dominant allele, big B, codes for the enzyme tyrosinase that functions in the pathway to produce melanin leading to black fur. So black fur, now this is how I would explain it to myself. Black fur will be this or it can be this because the dominant leads to black fur. Now the production of melanin in Labradors is very similar to the production of melanin in humans. The recessive allele small b codes for an enzyme that results in the production of brown form of melanin leading to brown fur in Labradors. So brown furs will always be small b small b can't be anything else so brown has to be small b small b this is something which you must do in the question whenever you're doing a genetics question then outline how melanin may be produced in labradors to produce black fur well you know because it said it is the same as humans so you know that tyrosine as you know in this we know that how melanin is produced tyrosine converted to dopa Tyrosine converted to dopa or you can say dopaquinone and then the dopaquinone converted to melanin. Dopaquinone converted to melanin. Right? And of course, where does this take place? This takes place in the melanocytes. So two marks, two points, narrow mark scheme. Then let's go on to the next part, which is of course the interesting part. It says another gene, now this is interactions of loci, and another gene MC, MC1R interacts with TRIP1. MC1R has two LLs, big E and small E. Okay, fine. So possibilities are we can have big E, big E, we can have big E, small E, and we can have small E, small E. Now let's look at the dominant E. So that means these and these allows the allele of TRIP1 to be expressed. So if these are present and uh, the Bs are present, then it will be expressed. The recessive allele, these, prevent the allele from TRIP1 will not be expressed. When no form of melanin is produced, the Labrador will have yellow fur. So now we have another situation when no melanin is produced, it will have yellow fur. So, part one says construct a genetic diagram to show the ratio of possible offsprings from a cross between a black male Labrador, black, the word is black, heterozygous for both genes. So what will the black be? The black will be big B, small b, big E, small e. That's what they've told you in the question, heterozygous for both genes and a yellow female Labrador, which is heterozygous for TRIP1. So if it is heterozygous for TRIP1, that means it is this, and it is yellow. Why will it be yellow? The recessive allele prevents the allele of TRIP1 being expressed, so it has to be small e, small e. This was given in the question that the recessive prevents the allele TRIP1 to be expressed, and then it results in yellow fur. So this is how you figured this one out. Otherwise, you're not going to figure this one out because it was given in the question. This was given in the question. If you look at the question, let's look at the question once again. In the question, it said that when would yellow fur be present? When no form of melanin is this. And when is there no form of melanin is when the recessive allele prevents the allele of trip one being expressed. So this had to be small e, small e. You have to figure this out from the question. Of course, then, of course, it's all very easy. If you figure this out, then everything is easy. Then parental phenotype was black. 
this line would be the parental genotype. So this line would be the parental genotype. I'm just looking at the headings and trying to get you all to remember the headings. Then the gametes would be easy. Gametes is simple. What do you do? I've told you this in my videos. 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4. So this will be big B, big E, which is this one. Right? And then it is big B, small e. And then it will be small b, small e, big E. And then big B, small e. So these will be the four genotypes for this. And now for the gametes for this, it will be simple here, one, three. So one, four is also the same. And two, three and two, four is also the same. So what will we have? We will have big B, small e. So we can write that twice or we can write that once, it's fine. Big B, small e, which is this one, big B and small e. And then small b and small e, which is of course this one here and this one here, the same thing. You can write it four times or you can twice, it's the same thing, it doesn't matter. Now, how do you get this next line? You have to get this one and this one. So you have to combine this one with this one. So this one will be what? Big B, big B, and big E, small e. Right? Then we have this one and this one. So that will be big B, big B, small e, small e. Or you can do it in another way is that you just take the first one and you do it with the, so you do it, it's very easy. You have to follow a certain pattern. You first do this one and then you do it with this, combine it with this one. So once you've done that, you'll get two and then you do this and this and this again with this. Similarly then this with this and this with this. And then the last one would be, the last one would be this one, and then this with this one. So this is how you will get a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different offspring genotypes. Now this will be the heading for offspring genotypes. So, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different genotypes. But now you have to match them with the offspring phenotypes because you have to remember this question is marked per line. So if you got this one correct, this line correct, you got one mark. If you got this line correct, you got the second mark. And then this is for two marks. And then the offspring genotypes are for another one mark. So the fact that you got six marks, how would you get your six marks? This is you've got to understand. So one, two, three, four, and then five, six for getting all the genotypes right and then getting the ratio right. Now let's look at the offspring phenotype. Phenotype, as you know, is the physical features. So will they be black or yellow or brown? That will be the offspring phenotypes. If you get that right, you get another mark. Now I have uh, solved this for you, but I would expect you to do it before you see my marking key. Uh, I wish uh, you could do the genetics question first and then look at the way I handled it. Now, why are these three black? Now, if I was in class, I would have asked you this question. They are black because you see the big B is dominant. As I told you here in the previous round here, I said black fur would either be big B, big B or big B, small B. And But then they told you this, that the small E won't let it work, but it has got the capital E in it. So here in the black, you have big B, big B, capital E, big B, small B, capital black. And here also again, you've got big B, big B. But wherever you have small E, small E, wherever you have small E, small E here and here, you know it's not going to work. So it's going to result in yellow fur. So the yellow words are all the ones which have got small E, small E, because that's what they told you in the question. They said the recessive allele prevents the allele strip one from being expressed. And no form of allele is produced. The Labrador will have yellow fur. 
So this was the question you had to understand, why is it going to result in yellow fur? So we had three, we had yellow here, yellow here, yellow here, and yellow here. And then why is this one brown? Why is this one brown? You have to answer to me in the question. I would ask you this in class if you were in class. Why is this one brown? Now you look at this one. Why is it brown? Because it's got small b, small b. And we did that in this one here. I said brown would always be small b, small b. So brown would be small b, small b, and it has got the big e, small e, so it's not going to affect the expression of the trip one gene. Now the ratio here, as you can see, is three black, one brown, and four yellow. Of course, I've got colors here, so I've been easily to express it. Now this was six marks. Six marks is very easy to get six out of six in this, but you have to understand the question and you have to figure this out. State this term used to describe a protein that is involved in the control of gene expression. Why would amylase be produced? Why would insulin be produced? And the answer to that is transcription factor. So transcription factors are in your syllabus now, and it's also in the new syllabus, so you all better know about it. Now coming to the last question, which is question number eight. 20 million years ago, an ocean covered the area where the country of Panama is now located. There was a gap between the continents of North America and South America through which the waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans flowed free, freely. The pork fish and stream whatever lived in this area between North America and South America. Now, figure 8.1 is the picture of it. About 3 million years ago, volcanic activity and sedimentation formed a narrow strip of land Panama joining North America and South America. Figure 8.2 shows the area 20 million years ago and now 20 million years ago and now. So you look at the diagram, you look at it very carefully. You see the Panama Strip, how it was connected and now it's of course got a little gap in it. 20 million years ago, poke fish in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans were able to breed successfully and produce fertile offsprings. Explain why Atlantic pork fish and Pacific pork fish are now not able to breed successfully to produce fertile offspring. That's a very typical question. And if you've done even five papers, you know that what the answer to that is. Asking very categorically says there's what? Geographical isolation or separation. References to the Pan Panama land separating the populations. Then there is no gene flow, no interbreeding between both the populations. There's no sort of, they're not coming in contact with each other. Now there are different environmental conditions or different environmental or selection pressures. Then they could be random or different mutations occurring in them. So their pattern of breeding has changed. Like of course, I was telling you once upon the plants that the flowering patterns change. They used to flower in March, now they flower in September. So they breed, they, they now will not be able to interbreed. So there will be different species now. So random different mutations. Then different alleles selected for, that means change in allele frequency. The red flowers maybe are being pollinated more. So the red colored flowers are more common now. The white flowers are not pollinated. So the right will become extinct. So allele selected for changes in allele frequency over time, what happens? Populations have different morphological, physiological, and behavioral features. So now they are not maybe having the same mating call or they are not breeding seasons have changed. And the seventh point is they eventually reproductive isolation occurs. And of course, the name of this, which is a geographical isolation is called allopatric speciation. Allopatric means they are apart or they're separated. So allopatric speciation takes place. That is of course is a biological word. So you get a mark for it even though uh, you just do not explain it, but just writing allopatric speciation gets you a mark for that. So that finishes this uh, paper. I'm not going to do the essay questions because they are no longer in the syllabus for this year's exams. So best of luck and all the very best. Thank you very much. Question seven and eight have been completed for you in this video. This is the third video on this uh, paper.